I gave you guys examples of Q here, none of which have anything. Whoa, what is that? Let's get that off of there. None of which have, you wouldn't think, would have much to do with bridge. Pool cues, barbecues, cue cards, all that stuff. Well, qubits have lots and lots of uses. There's more than one meaning of the term qubit in bridge. And I, I think that you've probably all heard most of them. Uh, the thing about a qubit is that they are very seldom natural. Once in a while, you'll have a qubit that's natural. And we'll talk about that here a little later on. But sometimes qubits have very, very specific meanings. And in, in other situations, it's just a means for the player to force his partner to bid again. Because there's one big, big important thing to remember about a qubit. And that is the old ASBAF that you see written across the top of a lot of convention cards. That just stands for All Strange Bids Are Forcing. It's an acronym known to lots and lots of bridge players. If you don't understand what your partner's bid means, for goodness sakes, don't pass. If your partner makes a Q-bid or any other kind of bid that you don't understand, uh, and it's a new suit after after you have found your fit, especially, uh, just make your most natural bid. If nothing else, go back to the agreed upon suit or rebid one of your suits if you're unsure as to what to do. You just never pass a Q-bid because you can't remember what it means. It's okay to forget once in a while, but it's not okay to pass a qubit. Uh, partners tend to get a little bit upset when you do that. Ask me how I know that. Now, we're not going to talk about the so-called control showing qubits this morning because that's a, a qubit of an entirely different type, and it's unfortunate that it has that name because they're really control showing bids. Nobody's come up with a good name for a control showing bid. So everybody just calls them slam Q bids or something like that. And we're not going to talk about that today because that really comes under the heading of slam bidding and discussions and when not to use Blackwood and that kind of thing. Now, the other thing I want you to be aware of is just because we're going to talk about a lot of qubits today doesn't mean that these are all that there are. There are loads and loads and loads of types of qubits, just like there are loads and loads and loads of doubles. So just because I don't mention one here today doesn't mean that there aren't a lot more of them out there, but I'm going to talk about the ones that you see the most frequently. So the Michaels Q-bid is probably something that all of you are familiar with. You know, one of a minor, two of a minor by the person sitting in the direct seat is Michaels. And that shows both majors, at least 5-5 five, five in the two majors. It can be made with as few as 8 to 11 points. Or uh, if you have 16 or more points, you should use Michaels. In general, if you have... A, a normal opening bid range from 11 to about 15 or so, bid your higher ranking suit first and then bid the other one. The reason for that is because a uh, partner, well, you don't know what to do when you have a, a normal opening hand uh, and your partner, say, makes a choice uh, with, the Michaels bid that you've made, if you have a normal opening hand, you don't have any idea whether to bid again or not. Because remember, with Michaels, it's a Q bid. Your partner is forced to choose one if the player sitting between you and your partner passes. It does not mean that he has support. It just means this is his preference, not I like it. He may only have two, two cards in the suit, and you never know what to do if you have that opening hand. If you're mini, you just pass. If you're maxi, you, you take another call. But if you're in between, you have no way of knowing what to do. Whereas if you're in between, uh, you can certainly figure out that partner will not support your suit if he doesn't have at least three. 
So it makes it easier on the person with the two five card major suits if you play it that way. But there are a good many of people who do not play it that way. They put no point restrictions on the hand at all. So this is a matter for partnership discussion. Talk about talk about that with your partners and decide what you want to do. If it's one heart, two hearts, or one spade, two spades, that shows five cards in the other major suit and five cards in an unspecified minor suit. So it's a pretty standard bid. It's not alertable, but certainly if the opponents ask, you should tell them. And if you're not certain, ask. We have a couple of pairs at our club who play high and low. Not the normal Michaels, but high, high and low, which is a different thing altogether. And if you are not aware of that, then you make an incorrect assumption. So if you're not 100% certain that it is regular Michaels, uh, and there are many variations on it, feel free to ask. Um, I, I just happen to know because I've asked often enough now that I know which pairs they are who play high and low. But if you don't know, it's always acceptable to ask to see your opponent's convention card or just ask the partner of the person who bid. Now, another use for a Q bid is in a no Trump auction. You know, people feel really free to mess in your no Trump auctions these days. Back when I first learned it was almost rude to interfere in any auction, especially a no Trump auction. The attitude was, oh, that's a big hand. It was 16 to 18 points. And oh, everybody was almost reverent when you opened one no Trump. Uh, nobody, nobody back then, I mean, ever thought about overcalling or interfering in a no Trump auction. That is not the case these days. As we've discussed many times, uh, using Mel's rules helps. Uh, but whatever agreement you and your partners have, I think that you can interfere in no Trump auctions for fun and profit lots of times if you if you have some experience at doing it. So when the opponents interfere, for instance, here, one no Trump, two no, two diamonds by the person uh, sitting in the direct seat there following the no Trump opener, three diamonds is stamen. The Q bid of the suit that the opponents bid in your no Trump auction says, do you have a four card major partner? Obviously, they went past two clubs. Oftentimes, if someone overcalls two clubs, whether it's natural or, or uh, conventional, a lot of pairs just put down the double. It's the only stolen bid double they use. But this is two diamonds. They went past two clubs, and so we need to have another way. I've seen a lot of people bid three clubs and say it's stamen. Uh, what do you do if you have a, a great long club suit? If you are like most pairs and you play the transfers are off over interference, then you don't have a way to show a club suit. So the preferred method of bidding stamen when you've had an interfering Q bid or an interfering bid is to Q bid that suit. Now notice we're at the three level. That means you have to have a game going hand to do it. 10 or more high card points here. If you don't have that many, um, maybe you have a five card major suit uh, and your hand is kind of weakish. A two level bid like that is to play. Partners expected to pass. Say, for instance, if you bid two hearts here instead of three diamonds, two hearts would be to play. So a qubit at the three level says, I have a four card major, at least one of them. Partner, do you have one? But you have to be prepared not to match. So when you do that, you need a game going hand. Susan. Yes. There's a question from Ella. All right, Ella, go right ahead. Thanks, Susan. Uh, back under Michaels, you said, and I didn't quite uh, remember, that you should bid the suit instead of using Michaels. If, if you have the normal opening point range in your hand, if you have, uh, oh, 11 or 12 up to about 15 in your hand, don't use Michaels. 
Otherwise, if your partner, if you if you happened not to do that and you used Michael's anyway and your partner chose, you don't know whether he really has support or whether that is a preference. So you don't know whether you should pass or whether you should bid on. I mean, an opening hand's a pretty good deal, especially if you're 5'5", five five, right? You have lots of shape. But at that point, you don't know. So the better way to handle it when you have a normal opening bid range, say 11 or 12 up to about 15, is to bid the higher ranking suit first and then follow it up with a second one. If your partner has support for that higher ranking one, you're going to hear about it. Then you'll know what to do. But if you play mini Maxi Michaels, when you have a mini, and that's what you'll have most of the time, Partner makes a choice, you pass. That that way your partner knows, oh, okay, he has the 8 to 11 point range and uh, just wanted to try to get the contract at a fairly low level. Then partner can bid on if he has, if he has the good hand uh, with support, he can bid on if he wants to. I mean, he knows what to do. He doesn't have to guess what your point range is when you have passed. Likewise, if you bid again after the Michaels Q bid, then that pretty much signals that you have 16 or more high card points. The problem is if you have a normal opening hand and you've used a Michaels Q bid, you don't know what to do. And your partner doesn't really know what you have either. If you elect to bid on, well, that's the time when he only has two cards in the suit. Uh, but if you pass, sometimes you should have competed further. It just makes further bidding decisions much more difficult if you use Michaels with every point range. But this is a very common thing. People have begun to really discard that that point range restriction on Michaels. Uh, and that's the reason, because uh, they like to show the two suited hands and you know it's like a, a toy particularly when people have just learned michaels they have a new toy and they want to play with it so they haul it out and and throw out that michaels bid sometimes when it's not the best call i'm throwing that out there because i i play many maxi michaels but if you want to play it for every point range that's that's fine too does that answer your question yes thank you very much a couple, a couple of questions from the chat, and then Gail has one. In the in the balancing seat, is it always five five? Uh, I would say that's probably partnership agreement. But I'll tell you what I have found. I've experimented a little bit with five four or six four. I can guarantee you that your partner will choose the four card suit, and he may have only two cards in it. Ask me how much fun it is to play a 4-2 fit. So <laughs> I would recommend against that unless you have a really high tolerance for bad scores. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, that's because that is courting disaster. If right. I'm 6-4, I'm going to bid that six-card suit every single time, particularly in the balancing seat. Uh, I don't, I don't like, I mean, I... I've had to practice and practice to learn how to play four three fits. Four two fits are beyond my pay grade, period. <laughs> so I, I, I don't want to practice doing them because I don't want to be in that situation. So that's a matter of partnership agreement um, okay. in, in the balance or in the balancing seat or any seat. You can do it in the direct seat, too, if you want to with six four. But I, I would tend to bid the six card suit. Uh, and if I'm weak, I would I would use it um, as a weak jump over call. Okay. If you play high low, is Michael's alertable? No, it is not. Uh, the pairs that I know at our club do announce it. And that is certainly the considerate thing to do because it's not the normal Michael's Q bid, and it's always better to over alert than to under alert. Um, I would recommend that if you play high low, that you do say something along the lines is this is not the normal Michael's. We play high low. 
and be prepared to answer questions about it. You don't have to alert it, but it's the sportsmanlike thing to do. Okay. And uh, then Gail. Uh, on the number two QBED statement, did I hear you right saying that transfers are off when, when the opponents interfere? That's the way most of the people I know play it, yes. Okay, I didn't know that, and that's good to know. Yeah, uh, the, only, the only things that are on usually when there's been interference by the opponents is if the opponents doubled, uh, whether it's conventional or natural, or when they bid two clubs. Uh, responders ignore a double if they have enough to bid, and if two clubs was the interfering call, they used the double to say I was going to bid stamen partner. They took my call. Uh, otherwise, anything else. Now, if you and your partner agree that transfers are on over two clubs, uh, then you can always do it that way. A lot of people play that that systems are on with interference. Uh, but the auctions can get very confusing when you play it that way. Um, you, can, you can find yourself behind the eight ball, uh, not knowing what to do, not entirely sure if it goes one no trump, two diamonds, two hearts. Is partner bidding a heart suit or is he transferring to spades? Did partner forget? What's our agreement? It's just easier for me to say transfers are off with any bid of two diamonds or higher. I have a, I put together a chart for how to, re, to compete further over interference in a no Trump auction that doesn't involve Labensol. Labensol is a kind of a complicated system for handling interference. It, it's a little bit complicated, but most all of you could learn it. It takes a little practice. Uh, and you will forget from time to time what a bid means, but it, it's very handy for salvaging your no trump auctions when the opponents have interfered. Uh, I, I'll try to put something together here for the future for how you actually handle uh, interference without relying on Labensol. Uh, it's very similar to Labensol, but it does stipulate that transfers are off. With interference. Does that answer your question, Gail? Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. You bet. You bet. Okay. Now, now we get to the good stuff. The, the use of a qubit that you're going to find very, very, very useful. When partner opens one of a suit and the next person overcalls, when you bid their suit, you're telling your partner you have limit raise or better values in support of his suit with three or four card support. If you have, remember, if if uh, if you, the opponent overcalls, we can use his bids against him. Uh, the negative double is a convention that requires the opponents to interfere before you can use it. Support qubits are the same way. When, when, the inter, when the opponents interfere, it's really nice to have a tool to use their bids against them in our favor. The one big thing that it helps you do is use that three level bid. Say you were planning when your partner opens a heart, you're sitting here looking at a, a hand worth 11 points with four hearts in it. You are planning to jump to three hearts. Well, now we have a pesky opponent who interfered here. Now you can use that three heart bid as a weak hand with four, four card support and bid three hearts preemptively. Remember the good old law of total tricks? I don't know about the rest of you, but I've often been sitting there with four nice cards in my partner's major suit and not enough values to show a limit raise. Well, if you use qubits to show support for your partner's opening suit, and with a minor, remember you need five cards, 
and you should not have a four card major. Don't ever, ever, ever show support for a minor suit opening. If you have a six points and a four card major suit, you can show at the one level, certainly. So what happens now is if you use a Q-bid, that's a preemptive jump raise. For instance, your partner opens one diamond. Your right-hand opponent overcalls one spade. Now three diamonds says, I have five diamonds. With me, it means about three to seven high card points, but you can certainly have a, a different range. You can use six to nine if you want to. But it says, I have support, but I have a weak hand, partner. Bid on at your own risk. Or if you bid two spades instead, it says, well, I was planning to use an inverted minor raise here, but we've had interference. And as we discussed the last oh, couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Uh, interference, inverted minor raises are off with interference. Now we use the Q-bid to show what two of the minor would have shown. In other words, Limit raise or better values, five card support in the minor, and no four card major suit to show. If you have a four card heart suit on this auction, and at this point you would need to have about eight points, the negative double takes priority over the limit raise of the minor suit. Always, always, always showing a major suit takes priority. Or in a major, one heart, two clubs, three hearts is now a preemptive jump raise. You're conforming to the law of total tricks. Most of you know that I'm a big believer in the law of total tricks. Marty Bergen and Larry Cohen went a long way on LOTT. Because you now have the bid of three clubs as a limit raise or better in hearts. Now, when, when the opening bid is a major, responder's Q bid can be either three or four cards or maybe even five. Sometimes you have five, but your hand is too good to give partner the preemptive raise to four. One heart, anything, four hearts is preemptive and is to play. When you have a better hand, you can Q bid to show partner, limit raise or better values, what do you think? Partner would be expected to sign off at the three level if he had a dead minimum or he would bid game if he knew that you had a limit raise or better. So, now let's talk about what happens when the pesky opponents have opened with a preempt. Ugh. Usually when I have a very nice hand, somebody bids ahead of me and preempts. I hate it when that happens. But if they preempt in a minor suit, if you then bid three diamonds, that shows both majors. Three clubs, four clubs, that shows both majors. And it better be a good hand because you're going to be playing at the four, at the four level here. But after all, the whole reason that opponents preempt is they have a weak hand, they have a long suit, and they want to take up a whole bunch of your bidding space so that you can't find the best contract. Preempts do that very effectively. Mike Lawrence says most people don't preempt nearly enough. Uh, I try to remember that when I'm thinking about whether or not I should preempt. Likewise, three diamonds followed by a qubit of four diamonds shows both majors, both majors. Now, if someone preempts in a major suit, it's it's a, a little more nebulous here on what that means. Uh, most of the time, people who play standard bidding, and whether it's two over one or not, uh, standard American bidding, uh, like two hearts, three hearts, would indicate a stopper-seeking bid. Two hearts, three hearts. I'd like to play no trump if you have a heart if you have a heart stop partner. If you don't, show me a four card suit. But if it's at the three level, 
three hearts, four hearts generally shows any strong, emphasis on the word strong, two-suited hand. It shows two places to play. The way that the advancer proceeds after that is to bid his cheapest, best suit. You'll find out what your partner's suits are when he bids again. A cue bid, though, is absolutely forcing. So if your partner pulls that out of the bidding box, don't put down the green card. Partner is liable to pass out right there at the table. Um, and as I said, after a week two opening preempt, a bid of three of that suit is asking partner whether he has a stopper so you can play no trump. Now, so, yes. What do you consider strong there? How many points? Oh, well, it's not so much points, but trick-taking potential here. When when the opponent has preempted, hopefully you're short in that suit. Uh, obviously, if you have a strong two suitor, you can Q bid if it was at the if it was at the three level. You can use Michaels if that's appropriate. Uh, there's a convention called Leaping Michaels. Uh, that is very helpful over two-level preempts, and those require hands up in the 16 or 17 point range to use. Leaping Michaels in particular is often a bit at the four level, so it has shape. It'll be two suited, short in the preemptor suit, and it will have good trick-taking potential. It, points are not so much the issue when someone has preempted both the, the pair that uh, bid the preempt and the opponents need to look at tricks rather than points because they are distributional hands and it's always, and I know it's, it's easier for newer players to be able to quantify a hand uh, with a point count but in the case of a preempt, it's really, really difficult to do that. Uh, it depends on how distributional the hand is. It should be at least two suited, though. Uh, and I would say the minimum count would be in the 16 to 17 point range. I'm sorry, I can't be more specific. It's just too dependent on the situation. So now then, I want to make note of one of the cubids that I'm not going to discuss in detail this morning, and that's the Western cubid and the Eastern cubid. Uh, the cubid of a week two suit that your opponent has preempted is typically stopper asking. In other words, I need a stopper in this suit to play no trump partner. Do you have it? The corollary to the Western cubid is the Eastern cubid. And it's the opposite. It says, I have a stopper in this suit. Are you strong enough for us to play no trump? So if you play Eastern Cubids, you're showing a stopper. If you play Western Cubids, you're asking. In general, if you have a stopper in the suit that was preempted, you're most likely going to bid no trump anyway. That's part of the reason that Eastern Cubids have fallen out of favor. Uh, you're really only concerned if you don't have a stop in that preempted suit. And that's what you want to know most of the time. So for goodness sakes, let's use the cubid that gives us the best answer. You know, it doesn't do you any good to ask a question if the answer doesn't help you, does it? So that's why Western cubids are more popular than Eastern cubids. Uh, as a rule, at any time, if your partner uses a cubid, for instance, in this situation, and it's undiscussed, just make your most natural descriptive bid. I, I hate it when I'm playing with somebody and a bid hits the table that we haven't discussed. I have to try to figure out what it is, and I don't always get it right, you know? Uh, so just make the best descriptive bid that you can if you're in that situation. And I think uh, you just answered a question from the <laughs> chat, but if your partner is asking if you have a stopper to bid three no Trump and you don't, 
then then you you just bid if you have a four card suit bid it that denies a stopper now you and your partner are going to be bidding four card suits up the line until you find a place where hopefully you may play a four three fit but what you do after a cue bid and you don't have the requested information you start bidding four card suits up the line following a, a takeout double or a negative double or a cue bid like this when when you're in this situation bid four card suits up the line until you find a reasonable place to play. Okay. And can you also um, use a cue bid of a preempt in the balancing seat? Sure. I mean, this is pretty much what it means is up to you and your partner and how you have, how, what you have decided to do. But I think that would be totally reasonable myself. We don't always get to sit in the direct seat when we have a strong hand, do we? Uh, so I would say that if it goes uh, two hearts past past three hearts, that I would expect that that's what my partner is asking me. Do you have a heart stop so we can play no trump? Now, bear in mind that that cue bidder has to have a good hand. He should have something in the other three suits just lacking in, in uh, a heart stop. Maybe he has a balanced hand. Remember, if you're short in hearts, you're not going to bid, use the cue bid. You're going to use the takeout double, right? So don't get confused there. If you have a singleton or a doubleton only, consider the takeout double rather than, than the cue bid. I think that might be the safer way to go, particularly if you have four cards in the other major. Um, that would be what I would do first. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does to me. Okay, good deal. Thanks. Any other questions before we go on? Okay, now then, cue bidding after a takeout double. When your partner has used a takeout double following, and, and it's up to you as advancer uh, to name a suit, a cue bid is the only forcing response advancer can make. It shows... A good hand, generally 12 or more high card points saying, I know you have opening values over there and you're short in the opponent's suit. I am unsure where we might play game, where our best game is. Maybe I have two four card majors and I don't want to guess because my partner may have one four card major and one three card major. You know, this isn't a perfect world. If uh, opening bidder bids a club and your partner puts a takeout double on the table, he may well have four cards in one major and three in the other. That is acceptable. So if you're sitting there as advancer with two four card majors uh, and an opening hand, any bid that you may that's not a cue bid of the opener suit is not forcing. Remember, we respond to takeout doubles or we advance a takeout double by responding at the cheapest level with zero to eight points, by jumping a level with nine to 11 points. This is total points. And if you have 12 or more, then there's a good chance that you and your partner have a game somewhere. If you're not sure, Say you have five hearts in your hand. Partner's supposed to have three card support for all on bid suits. Just bid four hearts. You don't have to ask him a question. You're pretty sure you know where that game is. So you don't have to. If you ask a question of your partner when you already know where you belong, you give partner the opportunity to pass. Say, for instance, uh, I've had people pass my cue bids following a takeout double saying, oh, I thought you had a real club seat. If you have a real club suit in this example, you respond no trump. A bid of the opponent's suit is always game, game value showing. And I'm unsure where to play. Maybe I have two four card majors. Maybe we don't. We might have a game in no trump. I have at least a partial stopper in the suit that the or in the suit that the opponents open, and maybe we can play no trump. I, I just don't know yet. So using 
The Q bid following a takeout double is simply a request for more information from your partner. And it is absolutely forcing. At this point, the takeout doubler should start bidding four card suits up the line following the following the uh, Q bid. You will find a 4-4 four, four major suit fit if you have one, if you bid that way. And it can be done at higher levels as well. But in that end, the three clubs say double, pass. Four clubs says, take your pick. Take your pick. Which major would you like to play? Uh, I have a good hand. You've shown a good hand because you forced me to bid at the three level. So let's decide where we want to play our game. Now then, there's another way to use a cue bid. And this time, it's when partner has overcalled. You know, the thing about an overcall is, unlike an opening bid, you never know how good your partner's hand is. When your partner opens, you know he generally has a hand worth at least 12 points. Some people open 11-point hands, but by and large, uh, most people will have 12 high card points in their hands when they open. And then here comes an overcaller, particularly at the one level, who may have as few as eight high card points, but he could also have an opening hand. You don't know, do you? Well, what to do, what to do. I'm sitting here looking at limit raise values of my partner's suit. And if I jump right to the three level, if my partner's on his usual lousy eight, we're going to be too high. But if, on the other hand, he has an opening bid and my right-hand opponent then is completely busted, then we may have a game here. What to do? I need a way to ask my partner, how good is your overcall, partner? Do you actually have something good over there? Or are you just, you have eight points in your hand and a five-card suit and you decided to bid? You know, which is it? Generally, the most common thing that you will see is, in this situation, one club by the opener who's south, your partner overcalls a heart, north passes, Two clubs by east is one of two situations, a limit raise of hearts saying, partner, how good is your hand? We can certainly play two hearts if you have a minimum overcall. But I have limit raise or better values for you. If you have an opening hand, please bid game. The other way it's used is to say, I don't have support, but I have a good hand. I have a good hand. Now, West in this auction will assume that East has heart support and will bid the appropriate number of hearts. Most of the time, that's what East will be showing. But every now and again, the advancer is sitting there with 11 or 12 points and only two card heart support. He doesn't want to pass one heart because it's a lead pipe cinch that South will bid again. What's he going to do? He really has too many points to pass. But his partner has said, hey, the heart suit's where I live. I don't know whether he has an opening hand. I don't know whether he has just eight points. The way I find out is by Q-bidding the opponent's suit. And 99 times out of 100, it will be support, limit raise, or better values for the suit that the overcaller bid. Now, in competitive auctions, a Q bid of the opponent's suit, or let's say they bid two suits, uh, a Q bid of either one of them is an attempt to get to three no trump. So it's stopper seeking. Even if you're not sure that this is what your partner is doing, it's usually best to make that assumption, asking you to bid three no trump with a stopper. It's a lead pipe cinch if the, uh, if the opponents have bid and raised a suit that he's not, uh, th that he's not showing anything in that suit. Uh, this, this is not what he's after. 
He's asking for a stopper for a possible no Trump contract. In this situation, you just make the best natural bid you can when it's not specifically defined. Here's here's an example auction here. South opens a heart. West bids a spade. North bids two clubs. East passes. South bids three clubs. Okay. West passed. He he overcalled. Partner didn't do anything. And now North bids three spades. This is asking for a spade stop for three no Trump. We've established a club fit. North is only concerned about the spade situation. If his partner has a spade stop and he wants him to bid the spades because the lead will come up to his hand. If he has the king of the suit, he doesn't want a spade lead going through that king. Uh, that that isn't that isn't a good situation at all. So in this instance here, when North bids three spades, we've already agreed on clubs, or it may be that North has heart support, but not likely. If he had heart support, instead of bidding three spades, he would bid three hearts here. So in other words, North has said, "Well, I don't particularly want to play three clubs because I have enough." that we might have a no Trump game if you have a spade stop. I don't have one. And so I need you to make the decision. If you don't have a spade stop, we'll play clubs. That'll work out. But if you have a spade stop, I'd much rather play three no Trumps. So in this instance, North is asking his partner if he has a spade stop. Alternatively, you can use a Q bid to show a stopper. When the opponents have bid two suits and you and your partner end up looking for no trump, a Q bid shows a stopper in the suit bid. Here's an example. That, that sounds really confusing, I know, when you just say it out loud. One club, one diamond, one spade, two hearts. We bid all four suits here. Three clubs by South. He says, don't have spades with you, partner. West now passes and North bids three hearts. One asks, two tells. It could be that North is showing a heart stopper, asking, asking a partner if he has a diamond stop. It's obvious that West has something in diamonds. He overcalled it. He didn't open. It may be that he has no intention in, in playing in, of playing in three no Trump. He's just using that as a forcing bid. Uh, sometimes you use what's available to you to, to force your partner to bid again. This is an example of the bridge adage, one asks, two tells. When when there are when you and your partner have two unbid suits and the opponents have bid both of those, bidding one of those shows a stopper. But if they have bid only one suit, let's say that East raised to two diamonds, now since they bid only one suit, a bid of the diamonds would be asking for a diamond stop. That's similar to what East is doing here, we think. Uh, it could be that he, I'm sorry, that North is doing here. Uh, it could be that he's just asking for more information from his partner. Uh, or it's one ask, two tells. This is an area where you have to discuss with your partner. And I don't care how many times you talk about it. You have to mess it up two or three times before you really understand it. Susan, back on number seven, is that considered a Western Q bid? Uh, number seven. Um, not really. Western Q bids are usually made at the three level. Well, yeah, it could be because it is at the three level, isn't it? Yeah, it could be considered that. Although most of the time a Western Q bid is follow is the two hearts, three hearts, or two hearts pass past three hearts. Um, you it it's similar in nature though. It's it's showing or asking the same thing. It's, that's a good way. If that's if that if it helps you to think of it that way, then that that's reasonable, certainly. Mm. Okay. Now, mm. 
once in a while you run into a pair that plays precision. Uh, unlike standard American, precision defines point count early on by the opening bid, so that one club generally means 16 or more points. That says nothing about clubs. So if you are bidding against a more advanced pair here, uh, I hate it especially when North opens a club, and I'm sitting here with a strong hand with clubs in it. Now my two-club bid is Michael's, and I don't have a Michael's hand. I hate it when that happens. And it doesn't even have to be a precision pair that opens one club in this situation. Um, if the opponents are, are playing uh, standard American or two over one, and they alert a one club could be short, consider that a natural club bid. It's not precision. Now, when East comes in here on the second round, the opponents, one club, one spade, pass two spades, have found their fit. East's bid is natural here. But if West had overcalled two hearts, for instance, and it had come back around to East, now three clubs is a cue bid. It depends on what your partner did. So if you run into the situation where you're playing against a precision pair, you, you'll probably see that mostly in tournaments if you're playing in an open or maybe even in some 750s in the bigger tournaments, you might see that. Uh, in this case, when you have the natural club suit and your partner hasn't bid, when you bid it on the second round, that's the way you show it. All right. Now then, sometimes the opening bidder bids. It does not promise support for responder suit. Opener has other ways of showing support for responder suit, right? In this instance, he could use a support double, couldn't he? So, a cue bid by the opening bidder does not promise support for responder suit. You have other tools. A jump to three spades here wouldn't have been weak. So opener does not need the cue bid to show support in the same way that responder does in an auction. Remember, opener's roles and responder's roles are different and their uses of these bids are different. It is likely here When you see an auction like this, that the opener has a really strong hand with long clubs and is asking his partner to bid no trump with a heart stop. Just like we have seen many times before, there are lots of ways to ask for a heart stop or the a stop in the opponent's suit, and the cue bid is generally the way it's done. Now, the, here's a definition that some of you may not have heard. It's called the sandwich seat. You're sitting in the fourth chair. Your left-hand opponent opened the bidding, and the opponents have bid two suits at the one level. For example, one diamond pass, one spade. If you bid two diamonds or two spades here, um, a lot of a lot of experts call two spades a natural bid. I, I'm not sure that I would do that unless I had six cards in the suit because I know Responder has at least four of them. I don't like it when one of my opponents has four of my trumps, you know. Uh, some people would also treat the opener suit, in this case here, it's two diamonds, as natural, leave, leaving only double or two no trump as your only takeout bids. Uh, there is an old convention that enjoyed some popularity here about eight or ten years ago called the Sandwich No Trump. It was a light takeout double of the two unbid suits. In other words, in this case, it would be diamonds and heart. I'm sorry, clubs and hearts would be the two unbid suits. If you here bid one no trump in the sandwich seat here, the fourth seat, showing 
a light takeout double. By that, I mean only eight or nine points. And I have support for the two unbid suits. Partner, what do you think? Should we compete here? Other people say that the Q-bid of openers suit should be a Michaels type bid. In other words, uh, one diamond pass, one spade, two diamonds should be five, five in the other two suits. Don't try any of these until you've discussed them with your partners. <laughs> this is a recipe for disaster. Oh, well, Susan said the other day that you could do it this way. These are bids that should not be used if they are undiscussed at all. Now then, there's one last thing that I want to mention to you about the possibility of Q-bids, and that is the jump Q-bid. That is generally a splinter. A partner opens at the one level and, and uh, righty overcalls two clubs, then the jump bid four clubs here should be a splinter bid, so showing enough for game, four card support, and shortness in the club suit. Or one club, one spade, three spades. I have at least five clubs. I have a good hand. I'm, I'm looking for game at the five level. And I have a singleton, never done with a doubleton. I have a singleton or a void in spades. Now then, there's one other. A direct jump Cupid. One club, three clubs. Or one diamond, three diamonds. A lot of people play that three-level bid as natural and preemptive. It's a little scary to do that. This is another thing that shouldn't be done if you haven't discussed it. One heart, three hearts, or one spade, three spades, on the other hand, though, is asking for a stopper. And in that instance, the jump cue bidder has a long-running minor suit. The kind of hand he might have opened the gambling three no trump with if he had been the opening bidder. He expects to take nine tricks if partner has a stopper in the opponent's suit. Without a stopper, the partner bids four clubs or five clubs uh, with a better hand. And uh, then the Q bidder will either pass the club bid or correct to diamonds. This is what is usually the case. It's this, a similar hand to one that would open the gambling three no trump, which promises a seven card solid minor suit, ace, king, queen at the top, at least, and very little outside. You open three no trump and hope that partner has stoppers in the other suits Partner can usually tell what your long-running minor is because it's his short minor. And if he has something like stoppers in the other suits, then he bids three no trump, or he passes three no trump. If he doesn't, he bids four clubs. If your long suit is clubs, you pass. If it's diamonds, you correct to four diamonds, and you play four diamonds. It's a good bid, but it doesn't come up very often. Now, here's some practice hands. Let's let's see how many of these we can get in here. Oops. North opens a spade. You're south holding this hand. North opens a spade. East over calls two hearts. What kind of hand do you have here? Is this a, a raise to two spades? No, oh, you have limit limit hand. Yes, you have limit raise values, don't you? So you would Q bid. Yeah, three hearts there says, I have a limit raiser better for you, partner. Please correct to three spades if you're on a dead minimum or bid the game if it's appropriate. And this is what your partner has. Here's the north hand. He will bid four spades following your Q bid. Notice that south would bid three spades without the overcall. But because North and South have agreed to use Q bids to show a limit raiser better when there's interference, if South had a weak hand with four card support, he would bid three preemptively. Here's another one. South opens a spade. 
West overcalls two clubs and North bids three clubs, saying, "Look at looky here, I have limit raise values for you, partner. What do you think?" Here's the south hand. Do you think you should accept and bid four spades with that one? Or should you bid only three? Fourteen high card points and a doubleton. Bid four. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I have way better than a dead minimum. Here's north's hand right here. This is what, what you got for a limit raise. Look at that. That's a really nice hand. Just have to keep um, Miss East off the lead here so that a club doesn't come through our king and we'll be all right. Okay, North opens a heart. East bids a spade. And this is South's hand. What should he do? He has 10 high card points. Mm -hmm. Two spades. Is that what everybody else thinks? Two spades for Q bid? I think that sounds perfect. Q bid. Yeah. Two spades. We have we have doubled in spades, so that gives the hand a value of 11 points. Four card support. But this time, North says, thank you very much for the nice raise, partner. Uh, but I'm kind of minimum here. And when your partner says he's a minimum opener and you have only limit raise values, you accept his decision because he knows what the situation is and you don't. Here's another example. One heart by South. Here's the South hand. West over calls a spade and North bids three hearts. Notice that some people might open that south hand one no trump. I should have made that jack of hearts, the ten of hearts. <laughs> one heart there. One spade, three hearts. What should south do? The answer is right there under underneath the auction. Remember when you use qubits, three, three hearts is no longer a limit raise. It is preemptive. This is the north hand. He has six points and four hearts. I sometimes do it with less than that, with fewer than six points. Uh, I will always have four hearts, but I may not have much else. And that's what that preemptive raise says. Partner, we have nine trumps, but I am I have a trashy hand over here. Bid on at your own risk. Now. If South, I mean, South has a good hand here. Oh, there, I did I did correct the heart suit to, to the 10 there. South has a nice hand uh, worth at least 15 points. If he'd gotten the limit raise with three hearts, meaning limit raise, he would definitely bid game, wouldn't he? But in this case, partner's three heart bid is weak and preemptive. So he just passes and hopes he can make the bid. Now, this time, West opens a club. North overcalls one heart. East bids a spade. And with this south hand, 11 high card points in it and four card heart support. A lot of people who don't use Q bids would bid three hearts with that hand. If you don't have the Q bid in your bidding box, the only bid that describes that hand is three hearts. But South uses Q-bids, so he bids two clubs. Notice if he used spades as, as the Q-bid suit, it would force partner to the three level anyway. That's what we're trying to avoid if he's on a minimum. So South bids two clubs. It happens that he has nice clubs, but that's just an accident. West now passes. And North just rebids two hearts. What should South do in that situation? What do you think that means? I think it means he has his usual lousy eight. And he doesn't want to go any higher. So that way, you're, you've stated a nice, safe two hearts here. 
assuming the opponents pass, and West, I guess, doesn't have spade support, so he didn't bid again. Um, South should pass. He has a nice hand, but his hand is probably better than his partner's. His rebid confirms that his overcall was minimum. So uh, the reason for choosing the clubs again is because using spades as the Q-bid suit would force the bidding to the three level, which is something we're trying to avoid. Now, the very last thing that I want to mention to you is a jump Q-bid in response to partner's one level major suit overcall is used by many people as a mixed raise. A mixed raise just means it's a mixture of high cards and distribution with four card support. You have too much for a preemptive jump raise, but not enough for a limit raise. So one diamond, one heart, pass three diamonds. That shows four card heart support. We're going to be at the three level, remember, and about seven to nine high card points, something like that. In other words, more than weak and preemptive, it's that good, solid, constructive raise with four card support. So, in summary, after talking about all these Q bids, when you're in a situation and you want to force your partner to bid, but you're not exactly sure how you should, consider using a Q bid. Assuming the opponents have been discourteous enough to interfere in your auction, or maybe they opened and you're the one who's interfering, uh, makes no difference. Either pair can use a Q bid. And when you're in doubt about the meaning of your partner's Q bid, just assume that she wants more information and make your no most natural bid. That will often be to bid no trump with a stopper in the opponent's suit, but not always. So once again, ASBAF, all strange bids are forcing and Q bids are strange bids. So never pass a Q bid because you don't know what it means. If you just remember that, you'll be okay. Thanks for coming this morning, everybody. And remember, no class on April 13th. Hi, Susan. Yes, one, one question. Um, it seems like Q bids, you really, if you do a Q bid, you should have 10 plus points. Is well, that if you, yes, if you're showing, yes, you're, because if you're supporting partner suit, you're always showing a limit raise. Okay. There, there, you have another way to show the weak and preemptive raise by jumping directly to the three level if you have four card support. And remember, a qubit can be used with either three or four card support. There's no differentiating. Yes. Uh, but, okay. but if you're if you're using the preemptive jump, you want to make sure you have four because it's a it's a law bid. Uh, and then if you have the good constructive raise with four card um, support, you can use the jump qubit or the mixed raise. So you have you have a bid that covers just about every situation that you need covered. Mm. Thank you. You bet. Hi, this is Susan. Thanks for watching this video today. Most of these videos come from our free bridge lessons that we present on Zoom every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. If you'd like to join us for those lessons, you can email us at the address shown below and we'll send you the link. If you can't attend the lessons, then feel free to subscribe to our channel and you'll be notified when there is a new one added. Again, thanks for stopping by and we hope to see you soon.